everybody, this is Michael Campbell and I'm the founder of Glossika. In this video, I'm going to discuss uh, what GUP is uh, that you can see on our website. That is Glossika Universal Pinyin. Uh, and for those of you who don't speak Chinese, um, the way that I pronounce Pinyin is in the Chinese way, which is Pinyin, uh, spoken in, uh, or as pronounced in Mandarin. So, um, first of all, uh, Chinese is, a, is kind of like a family of languages. It's like uh, the Slavic languages or the, the Romance languages. Um, there's quite a, a lot of ver variety between them. Um, and there's a lot of dialects. You can see behind me, I have a, all of these, right here are uh, dialects among the various languages. So the ones over here are um, Mandarin, and then we have um, some of the other languages, Xiang and Wu, and then the Min, Min languages over here. Min are, are separated by geography, so you have the Eastern Min, Southern Min, and whatnot. Okay, so um, the the point of um, GUP or a Glossika Universal Pinyin is something that I developed around 20 years ago when I was doing a lot of work on these um, these dialects. And now um, all all of these are all actually mostly written in IPA, which is International Phonetic Alphabet. So um, at the time, it, it was easier for me to be able to uh, write everything into a, a universal pinyin system. So, because a lot of the Chinese languages they have the same kinds of series like zhe zhe ce, a zhe ce se, ji qi xi, zhe zhe she, and then you also have um, some of these other series of sounds in there. So it was actually quite intuitive to just use the pinyin uh, spelling, JQX or uh, ZCS. Um, that spelling can apply across languages. Now, the thing is with the um, with Mandarin uh, Pinyin, or um, which is basically the standard Hanyu Pinyin, the um, or, or Chinese standard Pinyin, is that you have um, some abbreviations in there, and so those abbreviations manifest in something like UI. For example, GUI is pronounced Gui. Now, this UI is actually an abbreviation of UEI. So. The UEI is abbreviated down to UI. And then you also have, um, now, if you don't have a consonant at the beginning and it's just way, it's just WEI, the, the E is still there. Um, the other one is, for example, Jiu, J I U. Okay, so it's actually an abbreviation of J I O U. So the, the, the middle letter drops out, and so it's pronounced um, Yo, so Jiu. Okay, so um, what I've done is I've actually. Um, reversed engineered that back to the original spelling so that we could apply it for all of the other languages because you don't want an abbreviation that only applies to Mandarin. And so uh, what happens is you get um, some languages uh, among these Chinese languages, they actually have GUI pronounced GUI or they have JIU pronounced JIU. Okay, so uh, it, it actually helps to have that that spelling represent the real sounds that they, um, that in fact, just, just spelled phonetically. Okay, so the second thing is I use a, a, a variety of diacritics on the letters to represent uh, the different kind of vowel sounds. So, for example, if I have, I use the two dots, what we call an umlaut in German or a diuresis uh, used in French. Um, those two dots above a vowel just moves that to a central um, location on the vowel chart which is a pretty typical standard, you know, um, an old style I, uh, IPA system that was used um, using the two dots um, moves that to a more central vowel. So if a two dot over an E would make it a, an uh sound, um, kind of like a schwa, but it's a little bit off. Um, and then you have also the E eh sound, E, eh, as you find in a lot of the, um, like in Shanghainese, um, but you can also get it in, in Mandarin, I guess. Um, I guess it's under a, a specific. Uh, I can't really think of anything right now. I don't think we. I don't think it's used in Mandarin. But you have this s sound, so I, I basically just use a circumflex over over the letter. Um, a circumflex over an o is also possible for an a sound. But normally, you know, in like languages like Taiwanese, where you have both the a and the o, we typically just use a regular o, and then an ou for the other one. Um, and then in in Cantonese and and Gan and some of those other languages, you have the, the central vowels like e uh and u. Uh. So you just basically use a, an umlaut over the o and an umlaut over the u to represent those. Now in Mandarin, there's only one specific case where you actually have an umlaut and u. Now on a pinyin keyboard or pinyin keyboard, you don't actually have this letter. So typically you just use the letter v. 
And now you'll see in Glossika when we teach like the letter, the word for girl, which is nu, nu, third third tone in Mandarin, we we teach you to type it as nv. Now we've gotten some some comments back from people saying that's wrong. This is incorrect. Well, there is no v in Mandarin, and it's not used at any case. So the v on the keyboard is how you actually type uh, that word in Mandarin. So we're not we're not teaching you something wrong. We're teaching you how to type it. We're teaching you how it's actually used. If you have a pinyin keyboard and you're typing that word, uh, even if you're typing in romanization and you're typing to a friend over in text and in, in pinyin text, if you type nv, that person will know that you just spelled nu. Okay, so even if you don't write the tone, probably get you know they'll probably understand what you mean. Um, so there's a another spelling which is nue, which is Actually, ue includes that that u sound, but you don't have to write the um, you don't have to write the the umlaut because the reason for that is because there's no it's in complementary distribution. There's no other word in Mandarin that is pronounced nue nue. I guess that's where you have the e sound appear in Mandarin, but it's a little bit off. It's it's actually nue is pronounced nue nue. Okay, so nue actually means uh, to abuse. And there's another word. So any word that begins with N, L, N or L will actually have those two spellings. You can have nu, or you can have nu. You can have lu, or you can have lu. So you need to write the the dots on those words that are paired with just an L or an N and no other letters. So if the, if it follows by if it's followed by an E, so it's nu or lu, and lu just means to to pass over or ignore. Lu uh, guo. <clears throat> so you can say um, 虐, 虐待 is to abuse, right? So 虐过, um, 忽略 means to, 忽略 just means to, um, um, to be negligent, something like that. Okay, so um, for example, um, when I apply this to uh, Cantonese spelling, what happens is that you have these words in Cantonese like the word for he, ko, ko, ko. So you have this e uh and this u. Uh. So in our transcription, we write O umlaut, U umlaut. So that's quite clear. So I just wanted to write something here on this piece of paper, which I keep glancing down at. Because this example right here, an EOI or an EUE, I'm sorry, EUI, this is actually what's used in the Utpin, which is a Cantonese, um, Ut just means Cantonese. Uh, Utpin is a Cantonese spelling system. And so that EO, when I, when I see that for the first time, I'm just like AOE. I don't know how to pronounce that. I'm just, I, I think in terms of like IPA or like opinion, it's, a, it's, it's just like a regular transcription system. So when you give me this weird transcription system that somebody made up that is not related to any other like normal system out there, I just get confused. I'm like, well, where does this come from? Is that like a Dutch spelling or like you're using Dutch now to spell? Cantonese, sometimes it has six tones or it has nine tones. So real quick, these two are the first tone. Second tone, third tone, fourth, fifth, and sixth tone. This is the the seventh tone. This is not the seventh tone. Like the seventh tone will never sound like this. It only, only sounds like this. This is the eighth tone, and this is the ninth tone. Now most teachers they only count up to six. Okay, so that those uh, seven, eight, and nine are actually equivalent to the other tones. So you only really need to count. So it's kind of like a phonemic tonal system. It's like we don't need nine tones. We only need six tones because three of them are exactly the same. So that's why most teachers only count up to six. Okay, but that's fine. But okay, but here you have two two different tones for the first tone. So you know how are you supposed to pronounce that first tone? So Glossika does that. It'll actually show you the pronunciations of those tones. And if these other tones change into this one. Glossika is going to show you that as well because a lot of these tones will change into the second tone. Okay, now what do these symbols mean? Okay, so if you see a, a line over the top of the vowel, it just means a high tone. Ah, ah. And if it's falling from, from left to right, it's falling, then it's an ah. And then it's ah. And then we put this the line underneath the vowel just to represent that it's a lower version of it. Okay, so ah, ah, ah. Okay, now this one, we can't just put like a line through the middle of the vowel because that, especially if it's the letter I or the letter E, you can't even see it because the E already has a line through the middle of it. So we just put like a, a line at the bottom, but we need to kind of indicate that it's, a, it's a, at a different level. So we just use a cross. Okay, so the cross just indicates that it's a mid flat tone. It was probably the easiest symbol that we could come up with that looked like um, it's not a low tone, but it's kind of in the middle. So it's just a cross symbol. Okay, so um, that's basically how we're using that.
Um, we're also updating our transcriptions on Taiwanese. You may not see the Tylo or the um, Bei Hui Di on the, on the Taiwanese version yet, but we're actually updating that and we're going to um, publish that soon. So a lot of people are asking, um, they want um, Dai Lo. Dai Lo is the, um, the um, Taiwanese Romanized pinyin um, or pinyin. And so we're going to update that, but on our Hakka system, you can also see in the Hakka, um, Hakka, only Hakka Hailu uh, actually has that, um, that, that tone right there, the seventh tone. Um, actually, they count a different one, two, three, four, five, fifth tone, or uh, in Taiwanese, it's a seventh tone. Seventh tone, actually, in, in both Hailu, Hakka, and Taiwanese is the same tone. Um, if you want to learn more about tonal languages, I have a great um, article on our blog going over, uh, you can um, find that by just typing in tones in Asian languages, and I go over all of that in detail. Um, I will also make some more videos explaining tones if you'd like, you know, just let me know. Um, I, I can do that. And I'll make another video explaining the, um, the updates that we've made in Cantonese. Thanks for watching, guys. And don't forget to subscribe. Uh, I'm going to post a lot more videos um, next few days, probably in um, covering a lot of different languages. If you're interested in listening to them, send in your questions, let us know. Um, contact us through the intercom button on the website. Uh, we may not always be, um, we, don't, we don't always have people reading on, on YouTube, but if you contact us on intercom, we get that into our customer service uh, questions, and then we can um, also send, them, send those through the pipeline and, and queue them up for uh, re release through video uh, answers, because a lot of the questions we get from people are really great questions that we'd love to share with everybody. Uh, as an audience. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.